That's just an epic design fail. Hi everyone. Some of you might recognize these packages. Uh, if you don't, I will put a link just there to what they are or where, where I got them from. These are LED fidget spinners. Yes, I know, fidget spinners. Thought the fad was over, but it's not. I'm gonna put these together because I got these for my kids, but I'm also pretty excited about seeing how they work myself. I'm just gonna move this one out of the way. I've got two of them to build. I've got my trusty tweezers, got my solder paste, because these are surface mount. Let me just open these up. I've got the camera closer than I normally have it for this, so hopefully you'll be able to get a really good picture of what I'm doing. A little switch is stuck inside. Let me just get that out. It's stuck to the magnet. There we go. So we've obviously got a ball bearing, which we don't need to have there. And these are just the caps for the ball bearings. These are battery holders, two of them. They take two of the 2032 or CR2032 lithium batteries, coin cell batteries. I'm just gonna move those out of the way just for the moment. We've got some RGB LEDs. These are six pin, not the four pin like I'm used to working with. So they're actual, the way the controller is slightly different, but I don't have to worry about that because it's controlled by this little chip and I can't even read what is on it. Definitely can't at the moment when it's in its packaging. Maybe when I take it out, I'll have a look under the microscope and see what it is. We've got a switch, service mount switch, and we have some resistors. So that's it. They're fairly straightforward builds. We've got two pieces of Perspex that's pre-cut and we've got a PCB. So this side is where the coin cells sit and I believe that's where the switch sits. Let's have a look. Yep, it goes about there. And then on this side, we have room for three resistors. And I think we've got a spare one, which is great. Got room for the chip. Oh, let me just straighten that up so you're not seeing reflection. There we go, I'll try that again. So we've got room for some resistors there. We've got room for the chip. And then these are the RGB LEDs. And the whole thing is constructed by placing that there. So these are clear perspex. And the final piece, which is also clear, sits over the top. So the RGB LEDs and all the electronics are protected here. And the battery's on the back. And there's one on each side, obviously, to balance out the spinner, the spinning mechanism in the middle. And we'll have a clear fronted RGB LED fidget spinner. One for my daughter and one for my son. Okay, let's get going. I didn't want this to be a long soldering session. I'm going to again do this with my solder paste and I'm going to do it without a magnifying glass. So hopefully I won't make too much of a mess. I've had the solder paste out of the fridge overnight in anticipation of this because you need to let it, you need to store it and cool. So a fridge but you need to let it warm back up to room temperature to use it. Otherwise, it's super hard to get the solder paste out. And we need to make sure that we clean the end of it before we start. So I've just got a um, cotton bud that I use for that. Okay, so I need to get everything ready. I'm going to take all these parts out and lay them all out in front of me. Wow. Sometimes this plastic just peels off so easily that you end up losing components. That's one, two, three. And then sometimes you have to really fight with the components. Now they are tiny, I'm pretty sure they are, hmm, maybe they're all right, 0805, I don't know. Have to look at the, um, the paperwork that came with it. Okay, we've got the chip. That was a bit easier to get off. Tip that out. Get rid of the 
rubbish. Okay, and we've got our eligibility. How many have we got? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. They've given us spares. That's really nice. I like it when you buy a kit or you get some parts and it comes with some spares. Okay. Let me get the last one out. Okay. Fantastic. I have no idea which way. Oh, there we go. Little. So you might be able to see, maybe not with this lighting. But, um, maybe if I put it against the black. Not really. Okay, there's the top left corner. There's a little chip out of the corner, which is supposed to indicate where the, the zero point is. And I believe these little dots here on the bottom indicate where they go. So they go this way onto the board. Like that. So what I'm going to do is actually work like this. And I'm going to orient all the LEDs. You can see from the IC that the little marker is at the top and you can see it here on the board that that's indicated for which direction that goes. The switch goes on the back, we'll worry about that later. I'll have to hand solder that on. So the first thing I need to do is get some paste on. Let's see if I can get in a fraction closer. So let's get going. I probably shouldn't have put the components on my right hand side. I'm going to have to put my hand over just to help me place solder. So I hope everyone's had a great week. I've had a pretty cool week. I got my K40 laser cutters delivered this week, in which I've um, started a kind of like a, a, a video series of my journey with it. The first part comes out next week and that's just an unboxing but I also spent all day yesterday doing more physical labor than I've done for a long time I designed and built a workbench for it which I posted some pictures on Instagram unexpected maker if you're not following me there you should definitely do so just showing pictures of my progress and of the finished bench but I took about 150 gigabytes of 4k footage during the whole build process yesterday, which was a fun process. I had to go through quite a few batteries and I pretty much recorded myself making the whole bench from start to finish from different angles and yeah, it was a lot of fun, but I felt really sore afterwards and pretty tired. It was quite physical. I've got a single car space garage for my workshop. Well, to be fair, I've got half a single car garage space because our garage is also our storage space so there's lots of stuff in there being stored so not a lot of room to move things around so I've got a very small portable workbench that I made myself and so I built this workbench on top of my portable workbench now I have two portable workbenches except one of them is for the laser cutter so that'll be the second video in the series and uh, I'm not actually planning on using my cutter yet I mean I'm desperate to use it but for those of you that know anything about the, the K40 laser cutters, they're pretty crappy Chinese type cutters. I mean, they, they work. Admittedly, they work. They're not fantastic out of the box, but they do work. But they've got some severe issues when it comes to the controller boards. They're just not very accurate, very fast, or very reliable. And the boards that come with them only work with this... Uh, I won't call it illegal. I don't know what I should call it. Copy of... Corel Draw that'll only work on a 32-bit Windows operating system, which basically means that I'm just going to run this all the way along. I'll have to fix it up afterwards if it these are too close together. Try to do individually, um, which basically means I need to run it on a really old Windows PC, which I just don't have. I don't have a Windows PC that's got 32-bit XP on it, and I don't want to go out and spend money on a Windows PC, even an old second-hand one for that. I'd rather use my Mac, I do all my design work on my Mac. So I have bought a whole lot of upgrades for the laser cutter. Uh, one of them is an air assist, which will allow me to push air through where it's cutting to reduce the smoke and the flame. 
and then another one is a brand new controller board, a Cohesion 3D mini controller board that'll allow me to also use a Mac with some Lightburn software. So that's pretty exciting, but I need those to get to me first. I need to install them. They're coming from America through post. And unfortunately, well, it's a two week turnaround time with American post, US post, which is better than three to five weeks from China, but it's still kind of frustrating, especially for what I had to pay for shipping. A bit exorbitant. Anyway, so I need to wait for those. So I figured I don't want to start using the cutter. Well, I, I don't want to run out and buy a Windows PC just to use the cutter when it's not my ideal platform. I'm just going to wait, get all the modifications, all the parts in, do my modifications to the unit before I start using it. So that's also going to be part of my video journey. So I'm looking forward to doing that. I have no idea what I'm doing with it all, by the way. I I'm a laser cutter and CNC noob. I've never used a CNC, I've never owned a CNC. And I've done a lot of research on laser cutter before I bought it, but watching videos and reading is not the same as using, so. Okay, there we go. That was a very quick board to put together. I might finish one before I do the second one. Just in case I've done something wrong. I've got these RGB LEDs on the wrong way. So I'm going to stop here. I'm going to go roast this in my reflow oven. And then I'll come back and do the other side by hand. The, uh, the battery connectors and the switch. And I'll put this together and I'll see if it works before I do the second one. Okay, back soon. Okay, we're back. That went fairly well. Um, we do have one problem. There is a, I put a little bit too much paste along the strip on this side of the IC. And so I have a little bridge just on the corner here. I'm gonna see if I can get a small magnifying glass onto it so you can have a look at it. I don't know if this is gonna work or not. We'll try it. You can kind of see that there's a bridge between those two bottom pins. So I need to turn on my soldering iron and I'll need to solder that joint out. Solder the bridge out. Which should just be as simple as dabbing some, dabbing the iron onto it. Uh, the solder should try to go to the soldering iron. So it's just warming up right now. You have to be careful here because my iron is set for lead free at 330 degrees, but this is a much lower temperature, which if I'm quick, it should be totally fine, but might not be. So I'm going to do my best. I'm just going to tin the end of the iron. Just to uh, give it a bit of a clean. Once again, I'm being a naughty boy. I'm doing this on camera without my exhaust fan. Okay, I'm going to try to do this without my magnifying glass because I'd like you to see what I'm doing, but. I might have to move to it, just to make sure that I've got it all correctly. So, I now need to solder the other bits on. Not on very straight, but it's on. It should work. I do the same thing with the battery cells. Okay, this need to be much hotter. As you can see, it'll take a while before the uh, for the solder to actually go onto the pad. It's such a big area. Okay, that's cool. So it's going to sit like that. Straighten it up if I can. Hold it still. So I'm just to hold a little bit so I can do the other side. I 
works, okay? One more. And we can put it together. And we can see how it works. Of course I did that one more around. It's okay. Time. Should have used my fingers the first time. But who wants to touch burning hot stuff, huh? Not me. Okay, this project is turning into a much longer project than I expected it to. But that is everything together. I wonder if we just put the batteries in, if it work, or if I should put it together first. I'm going to put some batteries in and see what happens. There we go. One. Two. Two batteries. I'm assuming positive is up. One and two. And do we have any anything? Oh, look at that. They all turn on. I have no idea what they're supposed to be doing. But they turn on. So let's put the rest of it together, shall we? I'll just take the batteries out. No, I'll leave them in. Okay, so. Let's move this out of the way. Let's turn the iron off for the moment. We've got. Let's get all our parts together. All bearing. You can see everything's on here. Now I need to do the fiddly part of removing paper from the perspex. Then I have to hope that they both work because I can't give one child a fidget spinner without giving the other child. Well, not in my house anyway. All or nothing. So, this goes there, as you can see, it fits nicely over everything else. Give that a bit of a clean. Should have probably dusted before I did all that. And then that goes over the top. Okay, and then we screw it together. I'm assuming the bolts go at the back. So it's going to look nicer. The nuts, I meant, sorry. Okay, I'm looking, I'll do those up later. Okay, come on, squeeze in. Okay. Okay, I don't even know if my kid's going to be able to use this because this is really wide. Wow, okay. I can't even get my fingers far enough apart. Let's turn it on. Let's see if I can do it just. Okay, that's not going to work. No, how am I going to have it spin? <sighs> I might need to get a so I can put it on about a digital meter probe. Okay, they are changing colours. So we can do it faster. There we go. I have no idea what they're supposed to be doing. It's a bit hard to see it on camera. Yeah, okay. What, what we're seeing on camera looks totally different to what I'm looking at right now. What I'm looking at is in a whole array of stripy colours, like rainbow colours. Which looks very cool, but can't really pick that up on the camera. So it works! Fantastic! Just need to put the caps on. Which will hopefully hold the ball bearing in place. The bearing, ball bearing, bearing, whatever it's called. 
the spinnery bit. I don't understand how they're going to spin it with it being so wide. I can't even get it through my own hand. That's disappointing. <laughs> no. Can't do it. Almost through that, if I'm really careful. Oh well, it looks cool anyway. There it is. Fidget spinner. I'm gonna build a second one. Hi everyone, I'm back with a recap on the fidget spinner. So I built the second one. The, uh, the actual build went really smoothly, much better than the first. Clearly I'm, I'm better at doing soldering when I don't have an audience. But they're an epic fail. Why? Well, three main things. The first thing is the ball bearing doesn't even sit inside. It just falls out. The holes are too loose. The first one was kind of loose, but it was kind of okay. But the second one, if you actually hold up the fidget spinners next to each other, you can see it's, a, it's like a millimeter bigger than the previous one. It's just, you can't hold it in place. And if you do kind of squeeze it in there, it just wobbles out of, it's, it's terrible. <laughs> Such a, a design fail. The second thing, obviously, as I brought up already, was that it just doesn't, I, I can't, I can't like my hands aren't big enough. I mean, I've got small hands for an adult. Okay, I'll admit that, no problem. But I can hardly do it. This is it's hitting my hand on the way through. How are my kids supposed to play with them? My kids' hands are tiny. So that's the second thing. But the third and most important thing is these batteries, they fly out if you spin it too fast. My son was placing this on a mirror upside down, holding the top so he could at least see the lights spinning around underneath him in the reflection, which is very smart of him. But he was spinning it so fast, the batteries flew out in his bedroom in the dark. We couldn't find them. So I mangled these two coin cell holders, squished them together as, as much as I possibly could. Um, actually had them touching the PCB, jammed the batteries back in, hoping it was going to hold. He tried it again, put it on, spin, pew, both batteries went flying out. I mean, that's just an epic design fail. So I was going to put a link to the product on the description, but I've just decided I'm going to contact Banggood and say, look, I don't want money back, but please contact the manufacturer of this and tell them that their products are dud, that they should really go back to the drawing board and redesign it. Batteries shouldn't fall out. The uh, bearing should actually fit inside. If they don't have the right tolerances, they shouldn't be building it this way. And maybe make it small enough that it actually fit in a normal person's hand. Okay, that's it for me. Until next time, bye.